Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us. Here with us is Cineos Health Medical Director and Critical Care Pulmonologist, Dr. Keith Robinson. And he's joining us on the program to talk about the ventilator initiative to raise awareness among healthcare providers of a bridging option using intubated bi-level positive airway pressure or BiPAP devices for certain COVID-19 patients. Welcome to the program, Dr. Robinson. Why don't you explain it to us? Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. So we decided about maybe three weeks ago to really try to come up with a solution for the shortage of ventilators. And this really stemmed from my, my prior work as a, an intensivist, uh, and I still actually cover some, some critical care units here uh, at home, where we've had uh, resources that were limited on uh, some occasions within the facility. And we found that in some patients it was okay, and it was possible to utilize the BiPAP devices, that bilevel positive airway pressure device, uh, hooked to an endotracheal tube after a patient unfortunately, has gone into respiratory failure and to provide some short-term uh, ventilation for those folks. So that led to the initiative, which was to really uh, get down into the literature and get down to the, the nuts and bolts of how would we put patients who are going into respiratory failure with COVID-19 onto a device that uh, not only supports them, but maybe also, as you described, bridge uh, the need for ventilation and provide the, uh, the standard mechanical ventilators to folks who are more gravely ill. So that, uh, that, that limited resource with its heroic ability to keep people alive can be utilized in the folks that are a lot sicker. Now, we've heard of CPAP devices. How much different is it from a CPAP? Well, they both provide positive airway pressure. Uh, mm-hmm. The difference between a BiPAP device and a CPAP device is that a BiPAP would provide two separate levels of pressure. Mm-hmm. And in providing the two separate levels of pressure, you're going to be able to expand the lung uh, and cause uh, what we call ventilation or the removal of carbon dioxide from the lung whereas a CPAP device would only provide the one level of pressure uh, and may uh, only simply improve oxygenation of patients. And so with the two separate uh, pressures, we're we're not only going to uh, be able to oxygenate the patient, but we're also going to be able to ventilate the patient so that, again, uh, we're allowed to support the patient's full respiratory needs. Now, again, which patients are the candidates for this type of uh, bridging or just the the, uh, machine itself or in conjunction with a ventilator? Well, I think what we've witnessed when we look at the information coming from China and Italy, uh, we've witnessed that uh, there are a good number of folks when they go into ARDS with COVID-19, they sit generally at a mild to moderate level of ARDS, which means their oxygenation is poor, uh, but not to the point where, uh, again, we need to use really heroic means of, of mechanical ventilation to keep their oxygenation safe. And so for us, it's generally folks, that, as, as we're seeing here in the United States now, too, um, that are hemodynamically okay, um, not requiring any medications to support their blood pressure, and more importantly, patients that don't have uh, a large degree of organ dysfunction or, or failure, uh, which again is something that we're seeing in a good population of patients with COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, suggesting that as long as you're supporting the patient and giving them a means to, to have time to heal, they're less likely to progress and, and more importantly, become more gravely ill, requiring a more standard uh, mechanical ventilator. Why aren't more physicians talking about this or using this? I know you're trying to raise, raise awareness, but obviously there are others like yourself who understand this technology. Well, I think the idea that there are physicians who are familiar uh, and more likely to, again, what we're discussing is not only uh, being uh, a routine um, and importantly something that can benefit our patients and bridging our patients means that we're really trying to reach out to physicians that are probably not really care trained. And I think that's the issue that we see in resource limitation, too, is that there are very few critical care and pulmonary uh, trained physicians in the United States. And so we're really, uh, we, we centered this initiative not on the folks who are likely to understand this technology, and more importantly, the folks who probably have done uh, for a short period of time using a biotech device in this fashion. Um, but we were, really were reaching out to family practice doctors, maybe OBGYNs, uh, maybe small town communities where the surgeon uh, it's the fir- first person and the last person to leave a hospital, so they know the staff more. So we really wanted to make sure that every doctor that uh, might potentially be taking care of critically ill COVID patients uh, were aware that those devices don't need to sit idle, they don't need to sit unused, and they, more importantly, can stabilize a good number of folks with COVID-19. So to your point directly, I think we were really trying to expand the pool of physicians who are going to be comfortable utilizing BiPAP devices in this fashion. What are the chances of these devices being on hand uh, in facilities and um, just lying dormant? Good chance. Um, but, you know, part of what our, our discussion initially centered on the fact that uh, these were devices that are likely to be pulled out and, and utilized uh, regardless of how 
uh, at least initially, we were told that we could or could not use these, these devices due to aerosolization of virus. And so with that premise, we, we started to ask and, and look around to see how many more of these devices were available and, and, and found that many facilities have, if not just the same number of BiPAP devices as mechanical ventilators, maybe a little bit more, uh, simply because they're less expensive, uh, they're e easy to utilize, and, and they treat a, a wider population of patients without need of a, a standard mechanical ventilator. So some mm -hmm. folks like COPD or, or heart failure uh, will likely have uh, utilized these devices. And so we, we recognize that there's a, a good amount of these uh, devices in hospitals already. And I think that's why this initiative for us was so important, was that it really didn't require folks to, to dig down into the purse and, and, and spend more, more money. Mm -hmm. uh, it really just requires them to take things out of storage, uh, or more importantly, if they have them already out at the bedside of a patient, rather than not utilizing it for a patient that's going into failure, uh, we would suggest, as the World Health Organization has, uh, to intubate that patient early and then utilize that same device they were using uh, probably with a mask or, or with a helmet mm -hmm. uh, in order to continue to ventilate and oxygenate their patient. You know, CPAP users talk about the cleaning of their devices, the tubes, the uh, the pumps, things, the, the masks. Under these current circumstances, how would um, reusing these BiPAP devices or any other ventilation device? Well, these devices are cleaned between use, um, and, and most facilities are familiar with how to uh, uh, repurpose the devices for a new patient population. Mm -hmm. um, so that standard that's already uh, available within okay. hospitals shouldn't change. Okay. And I think the idea that uh, we're going to likely uh, see a lot of folks putting uh, extra filters, extra HEPA filters to, to filter the virus mm -hmm. um, and, and more importantly prevent it from, from exposing healthcare workers um, means that, again, I think a, a lot of folks, when they're familiar with these devices, they're going to know how to use them and how to clean them and get them ready for the next patient. Where should physicians and uh, other qualified health care providers go to learn about this uh, this option and um, get some training on it? So we have a web page. That web page is www.covid- my mom's a, let me back up. My mom's an English professor, so I better say hyphen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay. www.covid-bipapinfo.com. And on that web page, we've got uh, our brochure. We've got the algorithm for for clinicians to to review. Uh, there's an instructional video that they can, uh, can, I think it's about six minutes, that they can uh, look at in order to uh, instruct them on how to set patients up on the initial settings. And mm -hmm. on those algorithms, we show doctors how to titrate and, and respiratory therapists and nurses uh, how to titrate those uh, devices to keep patients ventilated and oxygenated. Dr. Robinson, thank you so much for this information and uh, being here with us on Health Professional Radio this morning. Well, I've appreciated it, and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, and stay safe. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Keith Robinson. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download to SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.